All over the country, and in fact all over the world, young people are learning how government works by getting actively involved. If I think there's a problem in the community, now I know how to get myself heard and to make more people like aware of the problem. This remarkable program called We the People Project Citizen gives students hands-on experience in the legislative process. I like it. I think it changes how kids will think when they grow up. Because I know before I didn't think I would vote when I got the chance, but now I know I will. From Hawaii to New York, from California to Kentucky, in classrooms in all 50 states and legislative chambers all across the country, students in the Project Citizen program are learning firsthand how the process works. This is We the People, Project Citizen. Project Citizen is a fabulous program. It, uh, of course, integrates all the content areas and allows the teacher the flexibility to uh, address the standards from multiple different perspectives. But most importantly, Project Citizen is exciting for the children, for the youth, uh, because it brings society into their classroom, which is what kids want. It was just an awesome experience. I wish everybody could have a chance to do Project Citizen. And what's great about Project Citizen is the project at the end where the kids come up with the topic, they come up with a plan, and then they present it usually to some sort of government body, a legislature, an executive body, something along those lines. They see hands-on how it works. They see the good and they see the bad. And at the end of it, they usually see some sort of progress. Project Citizen starting here in Kentucky grades 5, 6, 7, and 8 gives young people insight in how to address local officials, how to tackle problems in an appropriate manner and actually get things accomplished. In 1996, the Center for Civic Education launched We the People, Project Citizen, a highly successful civics program for middle and high school students. The program helps students learn how to participate in the political life of their community. There's a saying that the philosophy of today's classroom is the philosophy of tomorrow's government. Traditionally in the United States, I mean, Jefferson, Madison, everyone said one of the principal reasons for having schools, and also one of the principal reasons for having public schools, is to pass on to each generation an understanding of their heritage. In Project Citizen, students examine problems in their communities and develop and propose public policies to address them. In so doing, they learn how their local and state governments work. They also learn by experience their rights and responsibilities as citizens. One of the key differences between Project Citizen and a lot of other civic education programs is that the, the content is largely defined by the problems that the students select. Project Citizen in and of itself is a process, but in the process of doing the project, they learn a great deal about government they learn a great deal about the roles of government officials. They learn about the roles of citizens. In doing that, they learn a great deal about rights and responsibilities. The program works in a variety of school settings. It is generally used in a social studies or language arts class, but it also works well for interdisciplinary teaming or as a basis for service learning. It may also be used for civic engagement activities in youth organizations. Not just an academic program, Project Citizen challenges students to apply their knowledge and skills to real-world issues. With regards to our school, it, it just helps strengthen our, our entire curriculum because it's not just a social studies aspect. You know, they start understanding the, the skills and the responsibilities that, that they have not only for social studies in, in that context of democratic principles, but in every one of their classes because they understand their individual responsibilities with regards to being organized, uh, being responsible, being able to meet deadlines, and being able to produce quality work. Project Citizen shapes you in a way that you never thought that you could be. And that it helps whether people think it does or not. Implemented throughout the United States and in more than 70 other countries as well, Project Citizen is helping young people throughout the world learn what it means to be part of a government that is of the people, by the people, 
and for the people. Now, the question I need to ask you with regards to the interviewing that you've done and the brainstorming you've done in class, which of these issues do you think are public policy? Students begin Project Citizen by learning what is meant by public policy. In the United States, a public policy is an agreed upon way that our federal, state, or local government fulfills its responsibilities such as protecting the rights of individuals and promoting the welfare of all the people. The entire class goes through a six-step process, identifying public policy problems in the community, selecting a problem for class study, gathering information on the problem, developing a class portfolio, presenting the portfolio, reflecting on the learning experience, in step one, the class examines a variety of problems. Guys, the first thing we've got to do with regards to our project citizen is we've got to identify the problem. So we're going to have to begin our discussion on what the problems are that are important to us and determine which one, because we can only choose one, to do our project on. We all had to work as a class, I mean, figuring out what the biggest problem is because there's a lot of problems going on in your community. Once the class has decided on a problem, students divide into teams and conduct an in-depth study that includes research, field trips, and interviews with community leaders, knowledgeable citizens, and public officials. It was wonderful. I mean, if I had to work with, like, just, it was just me as a group, you know, just one person, I would have really got stuck. I mean, everybody in your group knows something different. If you don't know something, then the other person in your group can help you. The class divides into four groups. Each group works on one part of the portfolio, including explaining the problem, evaluating alternative policies, developing a public policy, and developing an action plan. The portfolio consists of two components, a physical display component, which is made up of four poster size panels and a documentation binder in which students uh, put the best research they have found. For many classes, the culmination of their work is the opportunity to make a formal presentation of their efforts. For some, this means a trip to City Hall and a meeting with city or county officials. An illustrated text, one for middle school and one for high school, guides students through Project Citizen. The textbook helped me because I didn't know what an action plan was and I didn't know what public policy was before this project, but the textbook helped me with policy. But with regards to a lot of our content, especially democratic principles, it's very hard for adolescents to grasp abstract abstract concepts and public policy is one of those areas with respect to that when, when we're dealing with how government works and and how it influences us individually the text brings it down to a level that they understand and the pictures were very informative I mean like I didn't understand some of what the book said but then I would look over to the pictures and they would explain it a little bit more forms in the text help students identify the problem conduct interviews and gather information from a variety of sources. So if you go ahead and turn your books, page 17. We need to start with our first set of forms. If you'll look on 17, this is going to make it much easier for us to do this. Much easier. Accompanying the student text are teacher's guides that outline steps to implement the program in the classroom. The materials that were provided by the Center for Civic Education are a breeze. They're so easy to follow. Everything is completely laid out for you. It gives you step by step what you need to be doing as a teacher, suggestions for how to introduce it, and then it gives the kids checklists to follow. The various components of the program not only involve students in cooperative learning, but also serve as a model performance assessment. In social studies, we really want students to become participating citizens. And so when students have a conversation with you about what they're doing in social studies, and it's related not only to how well they did on the test, but more importantly, it's related to, I made a difference in my community because of something I did, then I would say it's successful. The Center for Civic Education conducts Project Citizen in cooperation with the National Conference of State Legislatures. Project Citizen is important to us because it has the terrific public policy element. It's young people working together to solve a public policy problem. And uh, that's what 
our, that, that's what state legislatures do. And the more that we can get young people involved in doing that, the better they're going to understand. All across the country, in all 50 states, local, regional, and state officials provide support for the program. From a legislative perspective, I think the, the great thing about the program and the reason why the Wyoming legislature supports it so heavily is because it really shows students, rather than just hearing about how a bill becomes a law, it actually shows them how to make public policy and actually puts them in the shoes of a legislator. It shows me how it is in the real world. Project Citizen's success reaches beyond the borders of the United States. Tens of thousands of students around the world in emerging and established democracies are participating in Project Citizen. It's not that the young people don't want to get involved, but they just have felt that they haven't been allowed to play a part. And programs like this is actually developing a partnership between the nation's youth and between the actual bodies that promote citizenship, which is the way it should be. Their, their voice should be heard. And uh, this project uh, gives chance to, for children to implement uh, their maybe knowledge, their attitudes into concrete things. It's one of the rare things that really is working in our country, which brings uh, people of all three communities, Serbs and Croats and Bosniaks and all others together. If you think of Project Citizen, what do the students do? They go out. They look at a problem in their community. They think of alternative solutions. They come up with their own solution. They come up with a political action plan. That's not American. That's participation in any democratic society. In Kentucky, Project Citizen receives wide support from public officials and educational leaders as part of a larger statewide effort to promote civic education throughout the Commonwealth. We have civics government and civics is a strand within our social studies strands here in Kentucky and so as I said we've worked very hard to make sure those align nationally and as teachers implement the activities related to Project Citizen in their classroom they are very closely aligned with those standards. For Kentucky it's imperative that a program like Project Citizen looks at a lot of the higher level thinking in order for it to be incorporated in the classroom. You have a, a Department of Education that has put very specific core content guidelines down and has said in order for you to teach these materials in your classroom it must fit with what we consider uh, to be va of value in assessing our youth. So Project Citizen is able to accomplish that. There are, are the critical thinking, there is the higher level development, there's the problem solving skills that comes at a little different format because what it does is, is it again instills that much more independent work and provides that much more valuable teamwork atmosphere that isn't necessarily in your typical classroom. The sixth grade class at A.B. Combs School in Hazard, Kentucky provides a prime example of Project Citizen in action. The students in Perry County, Kentucky uh, recently took on a project involving animal control, animal safety issues. They were sixth graders. Um, through Project Citizen activities, they learned how to approach their local government, how to appropriately share the data that they had gathered, uh, how to share an action plan, and the local government acted on the student's plan. Those students are now saying that they feel empowered, they feel comfortable interacting with their local officials, and that they will stay involved. Project Citizen is a program that helps us and that helps the community. Our sixth grade group that decided they were going to do a Project Citizen activity, uh, they went about here at A.B. Combs of selecting problems they felt that we had with regards to our school as well as the community. And, and they had a wide range of topics that they felt were important to them. Brittany. Pollution. Pollution. Child abuse. A traffic light in front of Kmart. Putting animals to sleep at the animal shelter. There was much debate and discussion um, and they went through this process of asking me to come to their class and, and discussing with them what I felt was important, their teachers, their other classmates, and they narrowed down the long list they had to uh, humane treatment of animals. Which one do you really feel that we can have a greater impact with? Animal control officer. Why? Because the animal control officer is going around shooting dogs, stray dogs that don't have tags. Okay. Brittany? The animal control officer. The animal control officer. Oh, let me ask this question. Who makes the policy with regards to our animal control officer? The judge. The judge. They did a ton of surveys, not just here at school. They did phone surveys. They uh, 
they called our animal control officer and you know, did surveys with, with him and, and, and with our county judge and with other politicians and other adults within her family. Do you think there is a problem with stray animals in our community? Yes. What did the animal control officer do when he arrived? He got out of his truck and he had his gun and he went straight for the dog. All right, guys, we've been at this now for several weeks and you've been gathering a lot of information. I need a status report from each of our groups so we can see exactly where we're at because we're near the end of putting this project together. Group one, uh, that's identifying our problem. DJ, would you go ahead and report what you all have done up to this point? We have found the information of our surveys, um, what that everybody thinks, that if it's a problem or not. And what does those results show at this point in time? It shows that most people do think it is a problem. Okay. And that it does need handled. And it needs to be handled. Something needs to be done. Okay. So, so actually the research shows that we did pick a, a problem that is something that we can have an impact on. Yes. Okay. All right. We're good. By the way, did we? Enter, what kind of groups of individuals did we uh, gather information from? We've done. We've done students in the building. Students in the building. Emergency workers and teachers in the building. Okay. Uh, any other individuals that you, we that you can remember right just, now? Just uh, people from the community. Our next group, alternative policies. Can we please report our status on, do we have any developed so far that the class can discuss and choose from? It's not legal, but if they try to take the gun away from the ACO, uh -huh. and it's not humane for the ACO to shoot animals. Now go ahead, Brittany, would you tell me what the policy is that your group has been working on to address those two issues? Um, uh, we said that they don't, that no dog should die by a gunshot. Okay. And that um, uh, if the dog is sick, then it will be taken to the vet. Okay. And that um, uh, he should get a tranquilizer gun and t instead of a twenty two rifle. Okay. And the disadvantage of... Having a tranquilizer gun is that it's it costs more than the rifle that he has now. Okay. And that he only can um, uh, shoot a dog if um it is if it has any danger to any civilian. Okay. I need to know right now what part of the action plan do we already have developed that we can present at our fiscal court meeting. Uh, we have where we researched the problem and where we wrote a specific humane policy banning the use of guns. We found animal cruelty in all 50 states. We asked 100 adults and 100 students to complete a survey. We analyzed the county's policy and wrote our own. Guys, the one thing we haven't done that we need to make sure that we address before we go to our fiscal court presentation, and it is on page 36 of our book. Please turn to page 36. It's very, very evident, and that is to make sure that we have developed an alternative policy that meets the constitutional test. So now let's look here with regards to that. There's a checklist. Okay, our proposed policy either does or does not violate violate the limit on this power of the government, and that is interfering with a person's freedom of belief. Does our proposed policy do that? No. Okay. We went to court uh, to, you know, to do a presentation with regards to when we came up with our first alternative policy, and, and things did not go as positive as we hoped it would be. You know, it was, it was kind of uh, tense would be the word I would want to use. Hi, my name is Tim Combs. I'm going to be introducing the community policy. The community policy states that if an animal presents an immediate danger to the health or safety of the general public, the animal control officer should use a tranquilizer gun to contain the animal. We asked them, what is the main way to handle a stray dog? Fifteen people said put them to sleep. Two said if the dog is hurting someone, shoot them. Five said none of it is humane. Three said try to trap them without hurting them. And two said try to catch the dog. If you can't, then shoot them. Once I had had the opportunity to speak with our students and then speak with our county judge executive and, and our county attorney and some of the magistrates, they came and visited our school that very week. And they sat down with those students who had came to the courtroom. Uh, then we began working on compromise. What everybody agrees about is that shooting a dog should be an absolute last resort. 
So they redrafted the ordinance. Uh, they sent copies for them to read and review and asked for further revisions before they ever even got to the point of doing the first reading in a fiscal court meeting. Before you're bringing this to the court's attention, this county had no ordinance at all. And uh, now we will have one, and it's thanks to you. And uh, we can mail this ordinance to each county, every other county judge in Kentucky, if he wants to. And I think it'll make a difference. You kids have really made a difference in this. And I, I want to personally thank you for doing that. When we went to court, I mean, nobody's going to be able to do that at our age. I mean, it's an honor. Like, when we get older, if we ever get in a situation like this, we're going to know how to react, and we're going to know exactly what's going to happen. I think, I think the kids uh, uh, brought a lot of attention to her court on, the, on what needs to be done and, and how we need to handle it. I think it's a good, great project. Yeah, to use a school term, they really did their homework. Uh, you know, they um, they had their uh, facts and figures. Uh, they had uh, they researched um, laws in, in this state and other states, other areas that you know, really knew what the law was. And um, you know, that, uh, coupled with their opinions and, and what they think the law should be, um, you know, they, they really had a good game plan and, and stuck to it and, and I believe accomplished their goals. It's a really good feeling inside after you've done Project Citizen because you know you've done something good for your community. After making their presentation, the class returns to school where they reflect on their experiences, determining what they have learned individually and as a group. What did I personally learn about public policy from working with my classmates. I learned that it's hard to make a public policy that everybody agrees on. After completing their project, the class went to Frankfurt in May to participate in the statewide showcase, where they took top honors against 15 other schools across the Commonwealth. When they went to Frankfurt, they did marvelous. They did a marvelous job. They represented our school, A.B. Combs, so well, and our community so well. And they won the state award. The class portfolio went on to Seattle in August to represent Kentucky in the National Showcase as part of the annual meeting of the National Conference of State Legislatures. A.B. Combs Elementary received a blue ribbon indicating a rating of superior from panels of evaluators composed of state legislators from throughout the country. My parents were just, wow, I'm really proud of you all. In Kentucky, where Project Citizen is administered by the Administration Office of the Court, other examples of successful projects include Scott County, where students work to save a farm from further development. In LaGrange, students addressed unsafe railroad crossings. In northern Kentucky, there were projects about safe housing for the elderly. Additional projects addressed obesity, bullying, and other topics. The program is part of a broad commitment by education and judicial leaders throughout the state to enhance civic education in the Commonwealth. Those youngsters who are in elementary and middle school and in high school will in fact be the decision makers and the citizens of our next generation. Years ago it became a widely, a, a widely held belief in this state that perhaps the public schools were not devoting as much emphasis to educating children about their government and their role as citizens in their government and that we as a court system had a duty or at least had a good opportunity by using some of our resources to augment the education that children were getting with respect to government and to citizenship. The Kentucky Work Group on Civic Literacy and Engagement was formed in 2003 as a result of the Congressional Conference on Civic Education. And at that time, we had introduced legislation in the state to actually uh, form the work group through Senator Jack Westwood and Representative Tanya Pullen, and they specifically named Trey Grayson, Secretary of State, as chair of the state work group, and then asked that the administrative office of the courts, the Department of Education, and some other state entities be involved in that work group. 
and our purpose has been to travel around the state, conduct regional meetings, and collect information about where Kentucky is with civic education and, and, and engagement, and find out what it is that the state wants to do in terms of future efforts to improve civic initiatives. I felt very good about what we did. I wished everybody could have a chance to do Project Citizen because it shows you as you know as a citizen that you don't just go and vote and put down a name and put it in box and vote like that. You have to put your heart and mind into it and actually think about who you're going to vote for and who and why you're voting for them. Kentucky teachers are invited to bring Project Citizen to their classes. A classroom set of texts and training for teachers are available through the administrative offices of the court. So we're really not asking teachers to do anything in addition. We're not saying put Project Citizen on top of everything we're expecting you to do, but it's a good way for students to see how relevant what they're, the content they're learning about, how relevant it is and how they can apply it to their real, real life in their communities. Many times the response that we get is total disbelief from the parents. We had no idea that our child who is 12 years old would have the courage and the understanding to go before a fiscal court and share an issue that means so much not only to our family but to the community at large. I think it was a great honor and my mom and my dad and everyone was behind me. And when they get in there and they really take ownership of those problems and they really take ownership of the policy they've chosen, suddenly Project Citizen is theirs. And they come out full blast, so passionate about those issues. And it's contagious. And you see it over and over again. And, and politicians that normally wouldn't give them the time of day are all of a sudden saying, wait a minute, those kids have got something to say and we better listen because those are our future citizens. If I had a chance to do the project again, I would. Because it just wants you to look at the problems in the community and try to make the problems better. I didn't really think that we'd make this big of a difference. I mean, I knew it was something big, but I didn't think that it would go to making new ordinance. We were founded upon a representative democracy that requires citizens to participate through, at the bare minimum, voting, but then holding their elected officials accountable and by giving them the information so they can be representative. If you just vote and, and don't actually engage and, and share your opinions with your elected officials, how are they going to know how to represent you best? So it's really important, and without that representation, without that quality representation, our society crumbles. Project Citizen is conducted in cooperation with the National Conference of State Legislatures. The Center for Civic Education receives funding for Project Citizen nationally and internationally from the U.S. Department of Education under the Education for Democracy Act approved by the U.S. Congress.